Big news is on the way. Two brand new sales shows and two classic shows are returning to the experience. This week, sign up for our mailing list to learn more. guys welcome to rups world where it's party time right adam Woo, party. excellent Yay. my pepsi um but it's spider-man pepsi there so um welcome to another exciting episode of rups world with adam and chris as your hosts and we got a lot of surprises coming up for you later in the show uh right now we're gonna start off with three dollar books adam yep, we got three dollar books to start for this first segment adam's gonna be handling that then I'm going to jump in after the first commercial break at 8.30. So uh, other than that, I think we're just going to get going. Do you anything I need to cover? I think so. No, You know, the one thing I was just thinking about, we're a week away from Loki, less than a week away. Yeah. And that. Today? So it means I'm waking up at 6 a.m. again. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to wake up at 6 on Wednesdays. Oh, my gosh. And then probably something at 9 or 6 a.m. on Fridays. But it's Adam's show now. Adam is taking over. Chris just walks away. How's it going, Nick? How's it going, Chris? I wish I had a glass of whiskey right now. But that's an entirely different oh, oh, story. Don't, don't, right there. Southern Comfort, right over here. That is like the Adam walks out emergency stash. That's like when the day Southern breaks head. me, it's right above the old shipping computer. But Southern Comfort, Jim Bean Honey. It just sounds bad in itself. Jim Bean Honey's pretty good. Southern Jim Comfort. Bean Fire. The fire is where it's at. That's that's good stuff. And that we have for where did it oh yeah somebody brought those in as a Christmas gift once yeah all the little mini bottles those be coming up in the second half Nick what's that he was asking about Star Wars books Ooh, we got lots of good Star Wars stuff coming up later so starting off tonight three dollar books we have Mighty Avengers number two by Brian Michael Bendis and Frank Cho featuring Lady Ultron uh, Mighty Avengers number three Black Widow and Tigra. Number four with Ares. I'm really surprised Ares hasn't come back. I know of. Uh, Mighty Avengers 5. I think he's not currently in Marvel Comics. Six? I don't think so. I don't okay. think he's, he's been dead for a while, to my knowledge. Well, well, he died? Yeah. I think he got, like, ripped in half by Century or something and, like, Siege. Then, like, his kid, who was in Secret Warriors, had to deal with the thing of, like, being terrified and even though he was the God of Fear and the whole thing. I remember that now. See your yeah. warrior's angle, I remember. Mighty Avengers number 11. Number 21. When Dan Slott took over and Hank Pym became Sorcerer or Sciencer Supreme. So, did you see Adam Legend of the Blue number one, 9.8 set a new record again? Yeah, shocker. $2,500. Mighty Avengers 20. God, that <laughs> hurt. That just that hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> How high can that book go when the character hasn't done it? It's pure. It's like the, it's Nothing. like Darth Vader three with Doctor Aphra. Like, yes, it is a ninety percent chance these characters are going to appear in yep. something at some point. But until they do, how high can it go? Twenty five hundred dollars. That's bananas. B a n a n a s. New Excalibur number one. New Excalibur number two. Number three. Number four. Eternal won nine point four thirty six hundred dollars for nine point four. Number five. But how many nine? You could have bought one for like one hundred fifty dollars a year and a half ago. Yeah, I probably should have. No Excalibur number that six. That was actually when you won it. Yeah, I almost bought the one that we had on the wall for a while. I was there at the end of the show? I was gonna pick it up. It was a nice copy too. It was. New Excalibur number seven. Nine. And 10 is probably more than I can even fit on this row. Oh. I still need to pick up a Mr. Miracle number one, and that's 
about it for Kirby. <laughs> we're getting lots of uh, party on. Analysis. Oh yeah, of course we're gonna get the party on. God, how is it that we every week we say we're gonna watch it, and every week we never have time? Chris, when do we have time? Oh, uh, your camera's off. Just a little bit. Off the screen a little bit. Oh yeah. Here I will. That. Just that way. Just zoom out a little bit. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, unfortunately, the ratio changes between shows, and sometimes I have to reset. Thank you. That is full. Cool. Oh, Jeff even just mentioned it. Yeah, that's why I was actually coming over to the camera. I was going to fix that quick. So the one I wrote Aren't they in off. order when you put them up there, and then you just randomly pull them off? Yeah, you know. No, I don't else. know. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to reach and grab and see what you get. I'm going to put them back in order now just to appease you. Uh, Bam, back in order. I'm going to figure out what I did with those Star Wars books I had sent What aside. is... Okay, so this is your box. There we go. So this one I can add tonight. Yeah, I'm starting to clean up my office right now of all my potential CGC books and my non-CGC books. Which I'm pretty strict because I try to get nine eights only. So the things that would be like nine sixes, which is still look beautiful. A lot of times I never send in, so I send back here. So that's what I'm starting to do these days. For the Basically, show. he's completely out of room in his office. Yeah, I've, I, I've been out of room for a long time. You, you can't walk through there without tripping pretty boxes. No, I'm scalping in my, my bathroom. bathroom. I have to step over boxes now. 12, 13, 14. Number 15, 16, and 17. Uh, you know, Scalper is actually kind of fun. I don't know. I like when Juggernaut's on a team. So Warhammer is one of our questions tomorrow, too, right there. Like oh, I forgot about Warhammer off that. That's the list, yeah. Okay. Well, no, technically, I think that falls under my... Everything. Yeah, everything that requires approval. New Excalibur 18 and 19. And Chris cleaning his office is a full time job itself. That's why it rarely ever gets done. What's that? You clean your office is a full time job in and of itself. It'll go through phases where it's completely clean. You know, you can you can use it to hang out in and everything, sleep on the couch. And then there's other times where Jeff, this is the worst it's ever been. Oh, no, it's hands down the worst it's ever like, been. By far it's... the worst. And it's a, and, but you go back four months ago, it was always perfectly clean. Yeah, it's almost like you walk in there and be like, Chris, you, you doing okay, buddy? Do we no. do you need to call somebody? I keep buying too much stuff. Have a little intervention? It's, I'm actually going to slow down my buying right now. Just because I got uh, that other thing I need to buy. Yeah. <laughs> New Excalibur number 20, 21, 22. I will say the one thing I didn't offer tonight, Adam, mm -hmm. is the first batch of stuff that was up there. I didn't price, I, I don't know where that stack is that you took down. Uh, you cleared it off this morning, I think. It's got to be here because I didn't move anything okay. beyond here. Okay. And New Excalibur 24. Yes, I am putting. I've got three stacks of Star Wars books right now that I'm going to put up tonight. Well, that's good. Well, have tons of good Star Wars. Stuff. Biggest lie I've ever heard. Chris cannot slow down his buying. Oh, I've got another thing I'm buying. That's why, and it's costing a lot more than any collections ever cost me. So, yeah, that's vague and ominous. So I need to keep my financials good right now. <laughs> Iron Man House M number one. Number two. And number three. That should fill up that bottom row there. Yeah, close to it. Do I need to share this and all that? Uh, I should have shared it all, I believe. Okay. You could double check just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure it's all up there. I'm surprised 
That's a Kyle question. I wonder if we can stream it through our own YouTube channel. That's a question. Let's see what we have next. We have Amethyst, Princess of Gem World, number 11. Tales of Teen Titans, number 42, part of the Judas Contract. Green Lantern, 177. 157. G.I. Joe Special Missions number seven. Number six. X Force Annual number one with Shatter Star. Saying Shatter Shot at the top really throwing me off. I would really want to watch Deadpool 2 again. Yeah, it's on my list. Daredevil 204. Maelstrom number seven. Pretty sure that's Maelstrom. Years of Metal Bands has taught me a little bit about reading logos. Web of Spider-Man number nine. Let's see where that gets us. And we're going to make that fit. How's it going, Hope? Thanks for stopping by. See how Immortal Hulk 50 is going to end. Yeah. Because that, I mean, that's, that really determines where they can go with it. Yeah, that'll be interesting. It's like one of the worst kept secrets in comics for the past like week was that he was on that book. But have you noticed we've had like no, nothing about Loki for the last like week or two? In terms of, of like spec or not spec or rumors. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're getting the clips, we're getting all this other stuff, but it's like, and it looks amazing. Uh -oh. Greg. Greg's, Greg, Greg's causing trouble again. No, just because he said that's not Adam, that's Peter, since I made the comment earlier that I keep getting phone calls for Peter. X-Men Black Sun number one. That's just like a deep cut that nobody understands. Black Sun number two. Number three. Number four. No number five, though. Incredible Hulk, 83. Tiny House M. 84. Maybe we can announce the studio up with the other 85. Team. And 86. Greg, you still coming out this summer? Better question is Jen coming out this summer. Better question is does she even want the stuff that we had to send for her? Yeah, I kind of look at that every once in a while and see it's still down there. I'm like, oh yeah. Had that there since the beginning. Yeah. Well, then again, she was supposed to be out here last summer. Yeah. Planning to, he says. So. Let's see what we have next. Where are we? 15 minutes into the segment? What? Time is flying. Oh, shoot. Then that means I'm up in... 15 minutes. Oh my god. Time. It's just a series of numbers. Nomad, number four. X Men 2099, number one. Yeah, of course, that's one. I did say that. X Men Manifest Destiny, number three, with a pretty cool Colossus cover. Number four, Awesome Ramos Nightcrawler cover. Wow, never seen this one. Number five, with a Dazzler cover. That's pretty nice. God, Dazzler's first appearance is getting like unbelievably yeah. hot. Cause spec everything. Is it? Yeah. Twenty ninety nine for Nick. What's the rumor? Uh, the girl they want to cast for Ant Man, Quantumania, and Wasp is going to be Dazzler. Yeah. But I don't. I think there's. I think Ant Man is going to be a lot bigger than anybody I imagined. Oh, I think you so. You and I have been throwing theories around since yeah for a while on the Ant Man. NYX No Way Home number one. 
Yeah, that's one of those things. It doesn't ha- it doesn't fit too much into the universe, so it's a great launch pad. Like plus it, Paul Rudd. That's what I'm saying. Plus, it's just a great cast in movies. Yeah. And Paul Rudd. Lewis. What's his name? Uh, Jonathan Major. Lewis. Oh, um, Michael Pena. Michael Pena. 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 Yeah. Pena. Oh. NYX No Way Home number two. All these still just three dollars. Uh, number three for No Way Home. Number four. I'm still pissed at that rumor. Five. That's vague. And six. They had Lewis do a recap of the entire ten years of Marvel Universe. Oh. Yeah, I'm so that. I mean, like when that rumor popped up, I was like, "Oh my god, I can't wait to see this," because it was just like it's just yeah, this, the way he goes off. Yeah, he's it's pretty crazy. What's Wayne chiming in here with? Paul Rudd has a point. Yes, Paul Rudd never ages. Nope. Like he's yeah, he's immortal. He truly is. I mean, when you see those pictures, it's like, it's like how? It's 25 years ago. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. He's older than me. Let's see here. We have Dark Tower Treachery, number one. Number two. Three. Four. I feel like the owl in a Tootsie Pop commercial. Number five. <laughs> how many people can Number six. Well, actually, I know half the people on the show right now. A lot of them are going to get that. Yeah. One, two, and I want a Tootsie Pop. This, yeah, they still make Tootsie Pops. Yeah. They don't do their commercial anymore. Probably have like Snapchat shorts or something. Influencers just trying to sell Tootsie Pops. You guys in your I don't understand it. Rachel watches that stuff, and Adam, I'm just like... Adam still doesn't understand Instagram, he says. I'm like, what does it I understand? Re- it is so simple. It's so simple, but it eludes me. Kids today and their photos. <laughs> the Stand, Captain Trips, number one. Last well, more goes to... Uh, Two. Snapchat. Yeah. Which is t- Three. Greg, you have kids that age. Four. And five. All those probably won't fit, so I'm going to condense Dark I mean, Tower a little bit. He's got kids of all the ages. Because I think one of them's going into college. Greg has a kid in college? Man, Greg's got a picture in his attic that doesn't age. I would not have guessed that. God, I that giving Greg an actual com- compliment. Huh? Giving Greg a compliment? <laughs> <laughs> Stand number one. <laughs> You know, Greg, yeah, or Wayne, yeah, I, I am boomer adjacent. I've got an old soul. So, Frank, what is up with the picture you texted me? I don't stay in number four. Is Frank even watching? Yeah, he's watching because he's commenting on our Paul Rudd. Um, Frank is? He's commenting per- directly to me. Oh. He's, he's not sharing it on the rest. A kid that's a year out from graduating college. Wow. That's graduating college. Yeah. Jeez. Wow. Uh, let's see here. My we kid have... is graduating kindergarten tomorrow. Kindergarten? Kindergarten. Wait, she's graduating tomorrow and you're not going to be there? Oh. That's no. heart. Heartless, Chris. Come on. Heartless. Ender's game, number one. My daughter needs to learn early. <laughs> With you as her dad, yeah. yeah. Number two. Cat's dead. The world is not easy. The other one's coming. Number three. Number four. Number five. And then Ender's Shadow, number one. I don't recall ever seeing that one. That was cool. Did you see the movie? Yeah, I did. I know everybody who's read the books loves the books. The books were pretty good. I was never a super huge fan, but I liked it enough. But the movie definitely let me down. It was just a bad movie. Yeah, that's and that's honestly the biggest sin some of these things do is they just are not a good movie. They have such great source material, and then yeah, they don't know what to do with it. It's a, that's what we talk about. It's, it's, that's why what was the thing that last night I said I need I needed to go look who the showrunner and all that was. 
I think it was um, just because Jeff Lemire. Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth, yeah. Because it's like, yeah, it's what else have they done? Ender Shadow number two. Three. Number four. And number five. Whole bunch of Ender's Game stuff. And these are adaptions of the novels. Yeah. So that's where it's closer to the sources to go by a lot. We're going to clear off the dark towers and the stands that were made. Did you actually watch the Stan TV show? I did. I watched every episode. It was good. It was. It was okay. <laughs> it was. It was well put together. It was because it was so true to the book and even the previous miniseries that it was just a, a new version. <laughs> and that's what I didn't like. Is that it's just like when I saw the the Jungle Book John Favreau movie. What's well, not? It was just. That. It wasn't a bad movie. It's just like. I felt like I was just watching a live action version of the cartoon. That's every Disney live action movie almost. It's like, or they um, defer so much like Mulan where it's just garbage. Wow, you didn't like Mulan? I did not. Oh my god, I like Mulan. Man, that doesn't surprise me. Brilliant. Number what one. What's wrong with Mulan? A lot. Oh my god. Number two. Guys, chime in here. Let me know what's going on. Number three. Yeah, let's just turn this next segment into a debate on the Disney live-action movies, yeah. although I've heard Cruella is somehow good. Come on, Cruella looks so wicked and not for kids. I've, I've heard it's definitely not really for kids. It's it's like, it is so, it's Joker mixed with, what was the other movie that I, I thought Devil Wars Prada? There's that, yes. Yeah. I that, just don't know Devil if I Wars want. Devil Wars Prada was awesome. I don't know if I want to watch a movie about somebody that eventually his whole purpose in life is killing puppies. Like, I don't know if I can get past that. I can get past a lot I of things. I don't think they actually go to that. I haven't seen it, so. Brilliant number four. Yeah, I'm not paying 30 bucks to watch it. When it's free on Disney+, Plus, I will watch it. But. Yeah, which is being just another two months. Disney live action is garbage. Who said that, Greg? <laughs> Greg, whatever. I mean, it's... But the thing is, though, that they, they're just Melissa the same movie. Good. What was good? But that's not... Okay, no, the Disney right. live-action remakes are garbage. I, they're not garbage. They're just... Yeah. They're just, yeah. I, I will disagree that they're garbage. But, yeah, I, I agree. I would never rewatch any of them again. Captain America Reborn, number two. Three. Four. Number five. And number six. I always forget Brian Hitch drew this. Just now today, he's the new artist on the Venom relaunch coming out here this fall. Yeah. I'm glad that he's With, um, Yeah, that was the thing. Uh, Donny Cates is writing Hulk, and Al Ewing is writing Venom. Really? Yep, they basically switched books. Oh, I can't wait to see what Al Ewing does with Venom. Correct. Cash grab, yeah. What did they say? Cash grab? Cash grabs at best is what the Disney movie are. And they they really are. They what isn't like, it DC a cash grab? Explain no, that like thing. honestly, I would love somebody to tell me why the live action Lion King is just good. It's it is almost scene for scene, word for word, the same thing as the animated movie. Like just watch the animated movie. You didn't need to spend all this money on a, a yeah, live action. But it made a shit ton of money. It did, and it, it's just upsetting. It's like that's the bar is so low. <laughs> yeah, I do have nights in order. Oh, yeah, Treasure oh, Island was pretty good. I like Treasure Island. I'm getting off key and we're down to like five minutes or less. So I want to get at least one more row up here before I just vent more about Disney live action movies. Let's see what we got next here. We have. Astonishing X-Men Ghost Boxes, number one. And number two. Snug Yankee, right? Yep. War on covers, yes, but Alan Davis and yes. did one and Clinton Crane did the other. Astonishing X-Men Xenogenesis, number one. 
two, three, which I forgot about this weird cover. Yes. Number four. It was Bakula, right? No, it's uh, Carrie Andrews. Oh, it, oh, it is. It's, I'm yep. seeing it on the screen over here. So remember, like, the breakdown of fetishes on that cover when it came out? Uh, number five. Let's see your X-Men 1 and 2 for Chris Palma just snuck in and got those. Again, this does pull comments from Facebook and YouTube, so if somebody beats you, they were probably on the other site, unfortunately. Hmm? And Periscope. And Periscope. Although I don't think I've ever seen a periscope icon to know what it looks I've like. I've only, yeah, no, no, we've seen them when Kyle like will make a comment or something. Oh, like is that what that's what the third? Because I had to ask, what is that icon? Because on our side, guys, we see all comments from all three streams. Like this, they comment. So it's a little map icon kind of thing, like drop a pin on a Google Map or Apple Map. Uh, X Men Manifest Destiny number one. And number two. Okay, these are really inside of the way. So here we have three. Pardon me, everybody, as I walk in front of the camera. These are the ones that we didn't put up on the wall. Okay, here they are. Pardon me again, guys. Dark Man, number one. Still a great movie. Liam Neeson. Yeah, great movie. Kind of crazy Arnold movie. Uslo, great. Whatever his name was. Sonic Disruptors, number one. The New Invaders, number one. Spider-Man's Get Craven, number two of seven. Probably should pick this up now before it spikes when the movie comes out. Still blows my mind. We're getting a Craven movie. Get Craven, number three. With the jacked. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Strange, the Fantastic Four, Marvel Team Up, number three. New Thunderbolts, number three. Then Jonah Hex, number three, and four. Let's see here, Nick's getting dark, man. Yeah, Nick's getting dark. Man. One more spot there, so it's going to be Jonah Hex, number five, to fill in that bottom row there. I kind of have a spot. And we are at break time. Are we? Yep, we got a couple seconds here for next break. So we're going to take our first commercial break here. Uh, if you have any claims on what's on the wall, chime them in here in the comments and we'll get you taken care of during the commercial break. Once we get back, Chris will be here with probably some Star Wars specials and a uh, fun book. So we'll see you in a little bit. There's something for every imagination at your local comic shop. Visit ComicShopLocator.com to find a store near you. June is Pride Month on The Experience, and we're celebrating our friends in the LGBTQ plus community. Join us June 5th and 6th as we kick off our Pride Month celebration with Experience Pride, a two-day event featuring creators from the community as well as allies and friends. And then stay tuned all month as we continue our celebration of Pride. Only on The Experience, comics, culture, and sales.
Hey, we're live. So welcome back, guys. This is for the second segment of four segments tonight. You've got me for the next 30 minutes, and then it goes back to Adam, and then back to me. So, But in the meantime, right now we're going to go and introduce our brand new Star Wars book. And that we have Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters. This is our first Rups World exclusive. I also want to show you guys the back cover of this one. Let me get this out of this bag. Did you say so, the first Rups World exclusive? It is our first Rups World Star Wars exclusive. And also our first exclusive with Brian Rude. So this is something we haven't shown yet on camera. This is our the back cover. It's just a really cool one. It says Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters. Rups Comics, Brian Rude art, and that. So this is our exclusive. Brian Rude and Rups Comics have teamed up to bring you Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters, a number one exclusive variant available nowhere else. The regular issue is right here. This is the A cover for our variant. And that back cover is just the same as it was before. Let me try to line up with the camera. And that. And this one here is $20. It's limited to 3,000 copies. The other one here is $40, limited to 1,000 copies. Or you can get the set for 50 bucks. So these are available live on the show right now. The only, time, only place to get the Virgin variant here, the alternate cover, is singly, is here on the show. On our website, you can order these also on the website. You can also order signed editions. You can order CGC editions, CGC remarked editions. Or do we have CGC re? No. Just signed and remarked editions. I'm sorry, not CGC remarked editions. But CGC signed. And later this weekend, we'll be updating the site with an actual remarked edition. So you'll actually see what you'll be getting an example of. Uh, an example of what you would be getting. So, but this is our exclusive. If there's anybody out there who wants these, you can, like I said, order them on the website. You can order them right here on the show. Um, we're also just announced today, August 14th, free comic book day. Brian Rude will be here in store signing autographs all day, just having a great time meeting fans. So make plans to be here. Uh, in the meantime, get your copies while we have them. As I said, available on rustworld.com, available right here on the show and available right in the store here. So on that note, I'm going to put these up here and then I'm going to introduce a bunch of new Star Wars comics that we've got in. So everything from the recent Star Wars variants, Adam? Uh, those might be in the variants, but you can probably grab them. Okay. So I am going to just now jump into some other Star Wars comics. So we're just going to keep it rolling because we know you guys want to see this. Uh, but we'll also do a follow-up probably this, this next show or sometime in the next week with Brian and us on camera. So maybe we'll do a quick interview, a quick talk. Uh, maybe we if... Uh, well, our producers can do it. Maybe we'll stream him in with the show during the middle of the show. So we'll talk to you guys soon. And let's roll into other Star Wars comics. Let's start with this Star Wars theme. Uh, Star Wars Republic number 79. This is the Hasbro Toys Edition for $10. Uh, then we have the Star Wars Lando number one action figure variant. Mr. Colt 45 himself, five bucks. Then we have from Star Wars Free Comic Book Day featuring Obi-Wan and Anakin, who will be back in the Obi-Wan series that airs next year, currently filming with uh, Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christian and, and a host of other people. So that cast is turning out to be really amazing. Uh, Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi Force Storm number five for 10 bucks. Uh-oh, who's jumping in? Jumping in Star Wars, another bad Disney live action remake. Who's that? Greg. Greg, you're just dissing on half your job. I mean, Force Awakens was... It was... No, no, I won't... Force Awakens was a mess. A complete and total mess. Uh, Mandalorian is awesome. Star Wars. This is from the ongoing series, Star Wars 31. The Hunt for Aurora Singh for $10. Oh, I still hope we're seeing, like... Obi Wan or Andor, Star Wars Dark Times number seventeen there for ten dollars. I hadn't even thought of What's that? being in anything. That would be interesting. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's. I mean you have Dave Filoni, John Favreau. They are huge fans. They're ones that do fan service, even if it is just 
a background character, a one-off character that we see just one time just to give it to us once. But we did see Aurora sing in the pod race, right? I think so. She was up in the up in the hills or the mountains or whatever with her big super long Rogue gun. One was awesome. What's that? Rogue One was awesome. Rogue One was awesome. Star Wars, yeah, that's a Disney one. Star Wars, Rogue One, Disney movie. Awesome. Star Wars, Darth Maul, number five for seven bucks. Star Wars Adventures, number 20. This is a very fine copy. I forget who we're, the Jedi that she is. Uh, Adam is not as much of a Star Wars fan. Six bucks. I like, and I like the last Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so that right there says a lot, Adam. Yeah, I have good taste in some. <laughs> Okay, the Star Wars Adventures one shot, Flight of the Falcon for eight bucks. Star Wars Age of Rebellion special number one for six dollars. So I have two copies of Star Wars 108. This is a post Marvel Star Wars original series from 107, doing a follow up with 108 with a huge cast of. You know, classic Star Wars character or Star Wars, um, Star Wars artists and creators. Uh, Walt Simonson cover, seven dollars. Two of those available. Then we have Star Wars. This is also from the ongoing series. The subtitle was Outlander. Issue number nine from Star Wars is ten dollars. The Marvel Star Wars Volume One series, Marvel Star Wars twenty fifteen series. Star Wars number 12, Greedo action figure variant for five bucks. I have two of those available. Then I have Star Wars Jedi versus Sith number six, Darth Bane, $40. And to finish out that row, I have a Star Wars number 15, second print variant for $7 featuring Obi Wan Kenobi. A true Ewan McGregor Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, let's see. Let's get rid of this row. I'm going to keep going. It's so weird without music now. I keep thinking Adam purposely turns my music off. I think you do sometimes, though. Sometimes. When it plays the same friend song three times in 45 minutes. That's, that's you killing Prince. And then, she just got to kill an icon. So spinning out of Mandalorian and the Heir of the Empire series, we have Star Wars Thrawn number one. This is the origin of Thrawn. $30, first printing. God, I can't wait to see who they cast for that. Four series? Hmm? Four series. Thrawn. Oh. Star Wars number one. This is the ongoing series. The first six issues was Prelude to a Rebellion. $5. I have three copies available. Then I have Star Wars Lando number one, the one in a hundred sketch variant signed by the one and only Alex Ross. Signature right here. COA on the back. This is from San Diego Comic-Con limited to 15 signed copies for 50 bucks. Continuing the signed ones, I have Star Wars <coughs> Dark Empire. Bless you, Adam. Star Wars Dark Empire number six, signed by artist Dave Dorman, who did the great cover there with Leia as a Jedi for 25. This is before Disney retconned all that. Nick, I need you to be a little bit more specific than Star Wars number one. Or do you I, have one Star Wars number one? I have a very fine copy of Star Wars Darth Vader Alex Ross variant featuring Boba Fett as we first saw him in the Star Wars holiday special for $10. I'm sorry, can you want to finish? Do you? Yeah, you just kind of completely ignored me. Yep. You have just a single Star Wars number one up there, or do you have multiples? Uh, I have Star Wars number one from Prelude to a Rebellion for five bucks. I have Star Wars Thrawn number one for $30. Star Wars Lando number one signed by Alex Ross for 50 bucks. Second from the right top row. Second from the. Maybe Dark Empire? Not Star Wars number six. The Darth Vader I put up as uh, as I talked over you. So that wouldn't be it. 
I'm thinking it's second from the left, unless it's reversed on his camera. Is it this one, Nick? Just let us know. You'll get first claim. Then I have Star Wars, The Clone Wars, first appearance of Savage Opress, brother of Darth Maul, for six sixty dollars. Oh, I said six bucks for a second. Yep, he said sorry left. And then I need a the Darth Vader Boba Fett. Darth Vader Boba Ross. Oh yeah. Get rid of this row. I do have a little more Star Wars to go. Da, 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 da. Let's see, do I have enough to fill that next row? Some more Boba Fett goodness, including second appearance of Boba Fett. So, Star Wars Darth Vader uh, blank sketch variant for six dollars. Draw your own cover, or have somebody draw your own cover. I would personally have somebody else draw my own cover. I have a Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, very fine near mint copy for number 10. First, Phil Sherp for 15 bucks. Oh, you're going off. That's why. Oh, what's wrong? Like, see, some books are cut off, but you're going like off the. Like, I need to be closer. Yeah, there we go. That's okay. Sir, for the camera moving for a second. What do I hit? Break it. Break it. You hit the X. Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I have Star Wars number seven. The Simone Bianchi variant cover featuring Obi Wan for 15. I believe it was a 1 in 25. I have a reader copy. I'm going to go with a reader copy of Star Wars 43. First appearance of Lando. Second appearance of Boba Fett. It is missing a chunk out of this corner, as you can see. It is missing a little bit out of this corner. And that, and it is kind of mangled in there. It is flat. A press would make it much better, but it's not going to do anything about the missing pieces. So that is why it's $10, but it is the first appearance of Lando. Second appearance of Boba Fett. Ten bucks. Hope you should be. You're fine. Uh, if we already have your info, you don't need to sign up on our site. So, any new customers, yes, sign up on the site or message us on Facebook to get us your information. Yeah, just message us through Facebook or directly at order at rupsworld.com. Star Wars Boba Fett when the fat lady sings for eight dollars. This was by Cam Kennedy, the guy who did. Uh, Amazing watercolor work there. I believe it's watercolor. Then we have Star Wars Boba Fett Murder Most Foul for $15. We're sticking on this Boba Fett theme for today. Then we have Star Wars Shadows of the Empire special featuring Boba Fett right here. And that, I believe Dash Rendar is in there. Prince Zizor, IG-88. $12. Let's see. Star Wars Boba Fett Twin Engines of Destruction one shot for 20 bucks. And then we have Star Wars. I've already covered over part of the title. Star Wars Bounty on Barracuda for $10. And I'll fill it in one of those upper rows. Is that too far over, Adam? No, it's not too far over. Then my last Star Wars book of this round is Star Wars Boba Fett Agent of Doom for 25 bucks. I'm just going to toss that one up here in the open spot. Yeah, that's just right. So we're all good, Adam? Yep. Yep, I did those. I just want to make sure I have everything Star Wars together. You can do the Star Wars variants if you want. They're in, in the stack right here with all the other variants. So, guys, for War of the Bounty Hunters... All good. Uh -huh. Sony's Spider-Vers Rose is Black Cat is reportedly back to development with Felicity Jones eye and star. You mean Felicity Jones or Rogue One that we were just talking about? Yeah. <laughs> it's weird how 
how coincidences like that happen here a lot. So you're saying silver and black is back in? Or just the black cat movie. Just the black cat one, okay. So you heard it here, guys. Uh, it's just being reported that Felicity Jones is headlining a black cat movie. I got the name right, right? Yeah. Okay, I keep thinking I'm... Because, yeah, you see, it was, it was going to be a silver and black movie at first. Yeah. That's what they were doing. There. But a black cat movie, it's like, I don't know. Felicity Jones? Yeah, I don't know. And Felicity, Felicity Hardy, right? Felicia Hardy. I know I screw something up. Go figure. <laughs> so I'm going to clear this top row first before I move on to the next batch, which is the Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters and Dr. Afra variant. Was Dr. Afra variant new this week, Adam? It is War of the Bounty Hunters variant. Oh, really? Yep, it's the Pride variant. Oh, okay. So Adam can help me as I go through here. This is Sam Nee. Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters. Sam I'm trying to make out this Kamakuli. Yeah. Oh, it's a Kamakuli variant. Everybody signed, is starting to sign their names like in three. They break up their last name in three levels and do it in a rectangle for $7. Then we have Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters. Who? I don't know. I call the Bug Eyed Droid variant. I don't know the the bug eyed droid variant <laughs> for eight dollars. Star Wars fans hate me because I know none of the names. Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters Pride variant featuring Dr. Afra for seven dollars. Then we have Star Wars Linnell Francis U one in twenty five variant for twenty bucks, or it's available on Ruxworld.com for twenty five. Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters. One in fifty variant, one in fifty Lorez variant for forty dollars, or it's fifty dollars on Rough Swirl, your choice. I feel like you're highlighting that you're giving a better deal here. I try. I think that might be the point. <laughs> Star Wars: War of the Bounty Hunters, number one, jo uh, John Cassidy trading card variant for fifteen dollars, which is also twenty dollars on Rough Swirl. But we're running specials during the live show. Uh, that is all the Star Wars variants, right, Adam? Wait, she. Let's say Jones was Felicia Hardy in Amazing Spider-Man 2. Was that really her? What? See, now that sounds a little sus. Unless they're trying to... No, there's no way they're going to do that again. Oh, is everything old Spider-Man now new? I mean, if rumors for No Way Home are true, yeah. I mean, that's what they're All the things coming out right now are saying No Way Home is not implying anything No Way Home to Peter Parker is that there's no way home for these villains from these alternate universes to go home. Huh. And that, that that's the current thought process of going on this one, and that Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin was going to be the leader of them all. So we're literally going to get the Sinister Six in one movie instantly. Yeah, I should have kept reading this article that even mentions that. What's that? That she was Felicity Jones. And it doesn't? It does. It does. That's kind of weird. It is. But, you know, hey. Because she, she was in it for like, Five, six minutes. And that told her she was like uh, Harry's assistant. Yeah, I think that's right. And that, or her father's assistant or something. So, yeah, stretching the memory and that. But, okay, let's keep rolling. I'm going to get rid of this next rope. We are live. We are live. And that. Why did we ever decide to do live? Why can't we do this pre-recorded and edit it? Yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> that way, then we just have to follow the comments. That's all we have to do. Just throw the stuff up, follow the comments. And then I'm going to jump into, I'll let Adam do the variants next round. Is that what you're doing, Adam? Yeah, I'll do variants next round and some fun books. And that. Okay, I'm doing fun books out of the box then. Okay, do that. Frank says, but what about No More Jupiter's Legacy? I'm sure the 12 people that watched it and enjoyed it are heartbroken, Frank. Well, A, I know Frank watched it, I know I watched it, and I know of a bunch of other people that watched it. So there's more than 12 already, yeah. I don't know a single person that I know that actually watched it, other than you, I guess Frank. <laughs> but I, don't, I, ne I never heard anybody talking about it. I, I am shocked Netflix so quickly canceled, like announced no more. But whoa, whoa, what? Jupiter's Legacy is done in Netflix, the cast has been released from their contracts, but the Super Crook series, live action series they are making, is in that universe. 
That makes no sense. Yep. Are you sure it's not just part of the Mark Miller Netflix deal? Nope. They especially announced they are not moving forward with another season. They released the cast for their contract. No, no, no. I meant about the Super Crooks part. Nope. It's in that universe. Why would you put something in the universe when you've already now moved on from Netflix? Yeah, Netflix. It's like they make so much sense and then they don't. So, okay, here we go, guys. We're just going to have some, we got variants, incentives, keys, and just cool books. Batman Fortnite, zero point number three, Jim Lee's Batman versus Snake Eyes for $10. Then I have uh, Women's History, Jen Walters, Avengers number which, 43 for $8. What is this, Gwenum? Gwenum three. Gwenum versus, versus Carnage number three. Uh, variant by Lafayette. Lafayette. La Fuente. La La yeah. Say that again. La Fuente. You guys heard it. Go with that one. I'm not gonna say it. Six bucks. <laughs> I'm like, nope, not gonna try it tonight. Uh, well, this is a really cool cover. This yeah. is like an avatar. Yeah, homage. definitely has that feel. It's scary that I actually got that. Yeah. Demon Days X Men uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender Homage it's not for eight dollars. I'm gonna stick with it. It just feels like an avatar. It does. It's the it's, colors and costumes. Is that <laughs> truly terrifying and terrible? Tales of the Twisted for twenty five dollars. This is a very fine copy. Uh, this was, I believe, released only at their concerts. Then we have Noctura, number one, one in 150 sketch variant, or black and white variant, for $75. This is Tony Daniel, Scott Snyder, creator own series. Then we have Mortal Kombat X, number one, the Scorpion cover for 20 bucks. And Mortal Kombat X, number one, the Sub-Zero cover for 25, which is also part of this really cool connecting cover. Do you have any of the Spider Gwen number one Ruffs exclusive covers left? Are they in the show tonight or are they only on not the on the show tonight? Um unless I've got I have CGC copies available. So we can do that in my final segment. I have Looney Tunes number one featuring Pepe Le Pew from 1994 for $10. I don't know where to put it. What's that? Oh, yeah, I'll fit it up there somehow. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of this top row as we have our Star Wars, and we are done. And as always, guys, don't forget we have our Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters exclusive variant. Where am I putting these? Oh, these just go back with your, with the variants in general, Adam? Sure. I'll set them to the side so you don't just reuse them. Yeah, I was uh, interested in a CGC copy, so if you want to put one up tonight. Sure. Like I said, second segment, I'll pull those down off the wall in the store and uh, I'll get them out here. Radiant Black, number one, one in 10 variant for $8. Have you read Radiant Black, Adam? I read the first two issues and liked it. I'm going to check out the trades. Awesome. I like a lot of career and stuff on the trades. Justice League, number four. This is the one in 25. I can't believe that's correct. One in 25 Andy Kubert variant for $5. I can't believe it's only five bucks. Sometimes I have to wonder who made mistakes here. I have, what is this called? Osborne? Yeah. What was that series? I, I, Not sure. Osborne Incorporated, the was it? it? This is the Osborne series from October of last year. <laughs> this is the New York Comic Con John Tyler Christopher negative Spider-Man variant, which also is serial numbered. You can see those little serial numbers down there. This is number 457 out of 2,500. It is $60. I have only one copy available. Captain America Comics. Uh, Marcos Martin. Uh, this is the variant cover for five bucks. And then we have Justice League. No, who did this cover? Adam? Francis J. Manipole. Uh, Just League of America number two. This is the Francis J. Manipal variant. Five bucks. Another person, once they open the borders, we got to get down here to Fremont. 
Uh, then we have the Batman 75th anniversary. Uh, Darwin Cook variant for Justice League for five bucks. That is for Justice League number 33. Darwin Cook variant, five dollars. Then I am going to clear this. Three minutes. Just give me a heads up. Three? Uh, seriously? Yeah. How this? You know, this, your segment flew by. My segment's flying by. What are we flying on? Nothing except pure adrenaline right now. What's the Justice League cover by Radiant? Justice League cover by Radiant. There is no just. Oh, there was Radiant. Where's Radiant Black, yeah. Oh, it's, I'm looking at the wrong stack. Uh, this is the Andy Kubert variant. I believe it's the 1 in 25 variant for Justice League issue number 4. Let me make sure it's Andy. Yes, Andy Kubert. Yeah, I, I know. Sometimes I have to I take a quick look, and I just see the A, and it's like, so I just automatically assume it's Andy um, there we go. We got that one. And we are going to jump into this next one. Two minutes. Can you get a roll up? Race o'clock. Of course I can. This is Contest of Champions number one. The one in 25 variant by Linnell Francis U. Very fine near mint copy for $50. We'll see you, Wayne. Good night, Wayne. Have a great night. Fantastic Four, number one. This is the Alex Ross sketch variant. I believe limited to a thousand copies. It is an homage to the original FF number one from 1961. You can see this is just Alex's pencils for 60 bucks. That's awesome. Would you do 55 on the uh, New York Comic Con? For sure. sure. It is gone. It is gone. So we have Secret Empire number 10, the Jack Kirby variant, for five bucks. Featuring Ant-Man and his ant friends. Then we have Evil Ernie, the sketch incentive for issue number six. Evil Ernie sketch variant. Uh, this is, I believe, a one in 20 variant for five bucks. Then we have the classic Hulk the End. Frank, do you own this cover? Hulk the End number, or this is just the one shot uh, by Peter David, Dale Keown for 25 bucks. Then there is Deadpool 55, Punisher versus Deadpool, Tim Bradstreet cover for 40 bucks. And you need what, three more books to finish up. If you even have time. Oh. It is nine o'clock, so. So guys, Adam's telling me, Exit stage left or stage right, whichever one works. So, but thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here in a couple minutes. We'll be right back. Ciao. Today's comics market is ripe with new titles by creators who are determined to get their books into your hands. My name is Henri Kumpen. For the last decade, I've been making and selling my own creator-owned comics and dealing as a collector in live sales. My signature series, Yi Sun Shin, is the book that cannot be defeated in battle and has over a quarter million copies in print. Now I'm taking comics to the next level and laying the groundwork for my fellow creators to get their voices heard so they can connect directly with you. This is your chance to engage live with top comic book talent and get your comics signed without having to wait in long lines or pay any fees. But remember, we only have a limited amount of their books in stock. So always remember to... Call an ACC! June is Pride Month on The Experience, and we're celebrating our friends in the LGBTQ plus community. Join us June 5th and 6th as we kick off our Pride Month celebration with Experience Pride, a two-day event featuring creators from the community as well as allies and friends. And then stay tuned all month as we continue our celebration of Pride. Only on The Experience, comics, culture, and sales. Do you like ghost stories? I hope so. My name is Lawrence, a husband and a father. In life, I was a professor of religious literature and history. If I was still alive, I guess I'd still be all of those things. But I'm not. I'm dead. Like I said, ghost story. 
Believe me, I never imagined I'd be here, helping others heal in the afterlife. So where is here? This is the scene. It's the middle place where souls must confront the traumas of their past. Here I lead souls away from their demons that haunt them. I must also defend lost souls from others who would prey on them. To do this, I use the power of the Staff of Truth to help them break free. It isn't easy. Clearly, they need help and hope. And that's where I come in. I am a guide of souls. I'm the Shepherd. And welcome back. So we are going to start this segment with uh, this week's variants and stuff, and then go into some fun keys and premiums and kind of stuff Chris is doing in the last segment. So let me grab these here real quick. So we have this week Magic the Gathering number two, the second print variant. Featuring Tezzeret, that's his name. Said earlier today a couple times and I already forgot. Firepower number 12. This was the big 12th issue spectacular. They got a bunch of different artists to do covers for it. We have the Tom McFarlane cover here for six. Eric Larson cover for six. And then the Frank Miller cover for six. And one more for that. We have the 125 Todd McFarlane sketch cover for 35. Let's see Todd doing non spawn books too often, so that's kind of fun. Put these down here as we'll keep our Star Wars exclusives on the top shelf there for a little bit longer. I also have the 1 in 25 Frank Miller sketch cover. 420. Has Todd done a Kickstarter book? Like a variant for somebody? Uh, is this Kickstarter even fulfilled? Yeah, didn't you back that? Who's Kickstarter? Todd McFarlane, didn't you back the spawn figure or something? Yeah. No, I sent I, I sent a message saying hey, we need to do this today. It's expiring. Oh. And then we both just totally forgot about it. And so it, like remembered it two days later. Ultra Mega number two. This is the second printing. We had nothing going for on. For eight. Yeah, we have nothing going on ever. Okay. And then we have the one five sketch cover for ten. I think that's when we were doing the MTC fill filming. That sounds semi reasonable. And we have the one in 10 third print cover for 15. I wish I knew who these showrunners were first. Super Pro. I heard Todd was a bum in the Spawn movie. <laughs> Black Hat number seven. It goes from a bum to directing. This one is eight. Carnage, Black, Wit, and Blood, number two, the Carnage Shark cover, four, six. DC Horror presents The Conjuring, The Lover, number one. This is the one in 25 Gary Brown cover, 430. And then we have Iron Man, number one, The Infinite Destinies annual, Rob Liefeld, Iron Man, and Deadpool cover, four, eight. So they haven't truly let go of Jupiter's legacy. They're just releasing, in other words, if they don't release the cast by a certain point, they have to pay them no matter what. Yeah. And that's so more of that reason. Because no offense to the cast there, I don't think it's going to be any trouble getting them back or replacing them. If oh, that's a, that's a burn. Um, I mean, it's like, there's there was, was there anybody? No. No, I mean, that's, I, I, I liked a lot of the actors, but it's like, none of them are, there's not a single quote unquote star there. Much as people try to make Josh Jamal look like for a minute there. They do. And I like him. I love him in the Transformers movies. I like I, I loved him in um Las Vegas. Remember the T V yeah. series Las was Vegas? That, that was him. That, that was, was him. him in Las Vegas. Yeah. James Cannon, uh, yeah. That's where you gotta start. With uh 
Who's the, he's the old crummy guy. James Caan. Yeah. James Caan, yeah. James Caan, yeah. I was going to say Caan, but I couldn't remember. Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man, number 64. I first cloak and series. dagger. It was so cheesy. Yeah, it was pretty cheesy, but fun. <laughs> 460. Uh, World's Finest, number 73, featuring Superman and Batman as Swamis Incorporated. 460. Sharky the Bounty Hunter is on the list. Oh, yeah. Superman the Man of Steel 19 is signed by Dan. Yeah, so Somebody. Can't tell us anything there. Christian, who that is signed by? Uh, Louis Simonson? Oh, yep. Louis Simonson signed for 15. Should have soaked to the credits. Captain Barry number 27, the Aliens variant, 4 6. Astonishing X-Men number 25, the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive cover for five. Yeah. Young Blood Imperial number one, the Rob Liefeld cover for eight. And we'll get these up on the wall. Just see who else is running with this. So. Black Hat thing? Yeah. Oh, I saw it quick down. Which I usually don't do, but... Eh. The well, way everything's going lately, it seemed believable. Until I forgot she was in the experiment, too. Let's see, Captain America for Nick. We have the Russell Stotman Rogue uh, Young Guns cover for 10. Superior Spider Man number 6, signed by Humberto Ramos for 10. I see his signature right there. Daredevil number 122, 4 or 5. They even started with rumor has it. Well, yeah, rumor has it for everything. Well, I mean, once it's on deadline, they don't, say rumor. They don't say rumor. In the rumor mill. <laughs> the hashtag show is the one that's throwing the rumors around, which they do not have a great track. They get stuff right, but they get a lot of stuff wrong. Your young blood for Heath. That's why nobody else is reporting on it yet. Yeah, it seems. I know I have a spot for Heath here. Where did it go? Or no, I was looking for the other one for him, so I need to create a new tent. Let's see here. There is Heath. We have Contest of Champions number one, the hip hop variant. Four, six. Inhumans number two, the alternate cover signed by Paul Jenkins for 15. Batman 66, the lost episode yeah, I loved. for 15. I love Neil Gaiman's response to that guy on Twitter. Oh, that was great. I'm like, he, 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 oh, he, he, I loved it. I'm like, he did it with, he, he was, it was a surgical crash. He was crass but class at the same time, and that it's like it's like one of those things that you're not supposed to do, you know, to, to feed that. Yeah. But it's like he didn't feed it; he shut it down. Yeah. I mean, there's so few people that can do it like that, and he did it beautifully. And it's like, yeah, the guy was a, it was a, just an idiot too. The other guy. Detective Comics eight seventeen signed by Simone Bianchi for ten. So it says Simone. Uh, where was I at? So it says squad number I one. Wait, I should wake his ass up and get him on the show too. Cincinnati Comic Expo exclusive signed by Jason Fabig. This is the sketch cover for 10. And then we have the color cover signed by Jason Fabig and Peter Steigerwald, the colorist for 12. I'm going to start having all my friends do, you know, Ruffles Comics, like little 30 second. What do they call those things? Shout outs or you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I got Comic Tom at one for Bill Sinkevich. He asked me if I could get it for if Bill would do a little a little plug and everything. And we we gave him a few lines of what he had to say and boom, did it. There you go. Daredevil 265 signed by John Romita Jr. for eight. I'm gonna look up Dang. Easily sidetracked, right? I had work to do and I totally forgot what we were talking about. Spider Man, Black Cat. 
He's cleared Sandman. off. Sandman. Oh, yeah, the Sandman thing you wanted me to look up earlier. Oh, the season two stuff? Or, yeah, whatever that casting. Mm-hmm. Netflix is so rare to but immediately... Everything they cast on that, uh, that cast listing was basically the back half of the, of what would be... The back half of season one. Lady Mechanica number six for the Tablet of Destinies, the retail incentive for ten. We have Thunderbolts number one. This is the homage to the very first Thunderbolt series. This is the 125 for 10. Featuring Winter Soldier was leading the team. God, Thunderbolts needs a spin-off Falcon and Winter Soldier. Really, really does. Yes, Nick, the Sun Comics do come with certificates. We have some somewhere. It was to Amazon this year, the Lord of the Rings thing, right? Yeah, spending billions of dollars. Half a billion dollars. Billions. Half a billion on season one. It's insane. But that's to build the massive outdoor sets and everything that will be used over the next like five seasons. Yeah. That's what they're saying is that the following seasons will cost much, much less. I can believe it, maybe. We have Phoenix Resurrection number one at the 150 Art Adams cover. This is a near mint minus, I'd say. Yeah, a couple of dings in the spine there, but for $10. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, we can do that in Lady Mechanica. Let me toss this Phoenix up there. Hansel, 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 where is the book I have for you? I like that Alan Heinberg is in with the Netflix sign in too. Yeah, that's a very solid person to have on there. David Goyer also, which he's on everything. Literally, yeah, everything. he literally feels. But Heinberg is serving as showrunner. Convergence number six, the Stephen Rude 125 cover for eight. Awesome Stephen Rude art there. And then we have Green Arrow number 17 from Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino. This is the Emerald City Comic Con exclusive for 10. Level of casting in one of the first season. Yeah, I'm in for like five minute cameos. I mean, I see it almost like I see American Gods. That seems pretty where right. They float in and out. Which yes. I still never watched season two, have you? I have no. And season three's out now, isn't it? I think. It's canceled. Uh, Convergence is going on. It's like three things you killed me on. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Like taking away your little bit of joy. American Gods was canceled like forever ago. No. Yeah. Uh, Deathstroke number seven didn't even air till this year. For it was canceled like I think before oh, yeah, the season correct. finished oh, yeah, airing. I think it was canceled. Is like for you. Yeah, it's over four days ago. Uh, Deathstroke seven, the Joker seventy fifth anniversary cover for seven dollars. Ultimate Comics Avengers number one variant for fifteen. Ultimate Comics Avengers number one, the Leno Francis Hugh Red Sculpt variant for 15. Year of the Villain number one, the Art Germ Cheetah variant for 20. Let's see here. Grim Fairy Tales presents Wonderland number one, J. Scott Camel cover for 10. And then Amazing Spider Man New Year Vows number 13. The Mary Jane and Black Cat, J. Scott Campbell cover for 18. Mary Jane on one side, Black Cat on the other. And the classic playing card design. I just... I've never heard Brian Fuller is difficult to work with. But every show, he gets kicked off, so you'd think so. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, he, he leaves You never room. hear, like, what the difficulty is, no, but he's gone don't. from every show. Yes. Like, the only one he didn't was Pushing Daisies. But it only went one season, right? It went two. It did go two seasons. It went three. He probably would have been kicked off it. <laughs> Hate to say it, but love Pushing Daisies. And the thing but... is, it's like Star Trek Discovery. It, they took all of his setups, still made it into first season. Yeah, and that his his vision and all that was still mostly there. Let's clear this top row. I forgot he was even in 
Crazy. Did he, he even was, get past like design for that show? He was, he he was a off? huge Star Trek fan. Yeah, but I mean, he was off that show quick, right? It was uh, quite a ways in. Not into. It was into pre-production. Yeah. That's just yeah. You and I, and I love Discovery. Let's see here. We have Inhumans. Inhuman number seven. The Deadpool uh, sneaking into the old Inhumans background there for Marvel celebrating their 75th anniversary. This one is five. Uncanny Avengers number one, Jeff Darrow variant, four or five. Venom number one, this is the Leonardi cover, four or 15. Venom number one, Venom monstrous action figure variant, four or eight by John Tyler Christopher. Deadpool number six, introducing Deadpool 2099 for 10. And then Deadpool Assassin's number four variant for 10. Let's see if these fit around our Boba Fett covers. So they do. Comments here for a second. No, as soon as I get over here, I'm going to sneeze. Not quite. We have the Alex Ross Timeless Namor cover for eight. Grim Fairy Tales 2012 Halloween Special for six. Dark Rain the List Secret Warriors Frank Cho cover for 15. And then the FF number two Greg Horn Loki versus Thor cover for eight. Thanks, It's a really nice cover. I kind of forgot it existed until the other day. It is nice. We have Just League of America number 56 for 25. Superior Spider Man 25, the JG Jones Venom cover for 60. Really awesome Venom cover. I'll always love that one. It's always a shock. Batman and Robin, 236. What is J.G. Jones doing? 415. Um, some covers here and there. That's it. Yeah. He was having some serious eye issues there for a while. So oh, kind of to, Yeah. Too bad. Let's see here. Batman, 210 for 25. Batman fights the Legion of Feline Furies. I'll fill that row there. Let's see what we got up next here. Roded eye just so the bottom of the top row is gone. We have Venom 31 and the Nullified Johnny Storm cover for six. Venom 31, the Null uh, Commission cover, I guess I'll call it, for six dollars. Amazing Spider-Man 374 for 10. And then Amazing Spider-Man 55, the second printing, Patrick Gleason webhead cover for 8. We have Batman 263 for 20. And to fill out that top row, a copy of Batman 200, the 200th Smash issue, which 
Smash without the ing makes little sense. Hmm. Batman 200, 450. 200 smash issues. That's weird. And let's figure out the next couple books here. And I'll clear this bottom row off. Oh, we got like eight minutes left, ten minutes left. Eight minutes left, Adam. Eight minutes. That was a good guess on my part. Let's see what we can get up here in these last couple minutes. I got this next story. What you can have in the back half of the show, Chris? Any ideas? I have no clue whatsoever, and that is the God's honest truth. So I'm just going to grab some random boxes and go I with those, aren't you? Gonna do. Just going to sit here and talk. We Would have you guys rather just talk and tell stories? Tell your favorite celebrity gossip stories or Maybe encounters. We can bring Frank in on this and Greg, and we can tell some stories of some of the trouble we've gotten into. Batman 38, the Flash anniversary cover, 4 or 5. Like the time I had to bail them out of Canadian jail. I really hope that's true. King Titans number 12. This is the B cover, but still the first appearance of the Batman Who Laughs for $100. Actually, that's fully in camera there. True Believers, Miles Reynolds, the Ultimate Spider-Man number one, reprinting his first issue for 10 And then Crossover number one, the 125 Tradmore cover for 10 is that your secret stash? No. You hide it under boxes? Yeah. Box lids. Box lids, man. That's where you hide all the good stuff under box lids. Ain't nobody look at box lids. Phoenix Resurrection, Art Germ, Dark Phoenix Cover 4 or 6. A Prowler Hip Hop variant for eight. The Adventure Time, I believe this was the Emerald City Comic Con cover for number 15. Well, that one is five. Scheherazade, number two, Cincinnati Comic Expo cover. This was number two, cover E for 20. Harley Quinn and the Gang of Harleys, number six, the one in 25 Frank Cho cover. For 25. Let's flip this poster around here so I can show the price. Oh, in there. Hard to find 125 on the sixth issue of that series. I should fill this row here as Greg has some comment in there, I'm sure is entertaining. Let's see here. If Chris doesn't come hard with TMNT's in the next segment, I'm logging off at 10. Oof. That's a gauntlet thrown down. Logging off. Wow. Logging off at 10. He's going to sit here and criticize you the entire last 30 minutes. Actually, that could probably be very entertaining. That probably would actually be very entertaining. I'm not opposed to... It, actually, yeah. yeah. Should be pretty entertaining. Let's flip these around here quick so I can just show these off. We have Harley Quinn number 23, the 125 Manicana cover for 10. See here. FYI, I'm blowing off at 10 as well. Yeah, that sounds, you know what? Hey, let's, how about this? Let's all leave it 10. Sound, sound good to everybody? That sounds like a wonderful idea. Is it 10 so, right now? It is not 10 right now. You still have time to suffer. Batman, a 638 first printing for 35, which is the reveal of the Red Hood. And then the second printing, which spoiled the reveal, 450. Let you see through there. I'm done. We have Solo Avengers starring Hawkeye and Black Widow, number seven. This is six dollars tonight. I'm gonna open a mystery nail call and offer the stuff inside without looking it up. Sure. Thief of Thieves, number one. This is from the Skybound fifth anniversary box at four thirty. See, we're unionizing. Yeah. Your adventure time, I see. Let's see how that all works out, guys. I am all for the concept of unions. 
Let's see here. Then we have the Batman 103 1 in 25 design variant for Bruce Wayne. Young Bruce Wayne at that. 425. That'll fill that top row there. So I grab the next stacks. We're down to three minutes. We are? For my part, yeah. Oh, okay. Get me. Like, what? I thought I still had to do work. I mean, you, you always have to do work. Let me get these clear, and I'm going to try to fill this last Hello, I got a Facebook request for an Andrew Morgan. Get it some hot chick. Ladies can be Andrews. Yeah, no. We have Trinity, number one, signed by Matt Wagner. Number 445 out of 499, 425, with Dynamic Force COA on the back there. Power Pack number one. Is this also Dynamic Force COA? It does. This is signed by Colleen Dorn and Terry Austin, 425. For all you Power Pack fans out there, which I think Greg's about the only one I know that is watching is a Power Pack fan. New X-Men number 130. This is signed by Ethan Manskyver and Dave Cockrum. This is number 58. Wow, that's a low number. I don't see those too often. That is 50. Batman Planetary Night on Earth, signed by John Cassidy. Number 26, even lower. 430. Is that a number up there? Number 26 out of 299. Top percentile. Kind of. That one's 30. Then Avengers Wizard Ace Edition. This is $20. Also signed by John Cassidy. Doing his homage to Avengers number four. And we have Unbelievable One Pool number seven. Mike Diodato Jr. variant for $75. And Spider Man Bad Rock with Venom and Carnage. This is number one B for $6. And that should fill up. I got one more spot here to get filled. So it is going to be the Reanimator Zero Green Foil Edition for eight. The little logo there up, shiny and green. So that is going to be the last one for this segment here. Uh, if there's any claims you want up there, let me know. And we'll get them taken care of in between the commercial break. Uh, we'll be back in a short bit with Chris finishing out the show. So we'll see you in a minute. on the experience and we're celebrating our friends in the lgbtq plus community join us june 5th and 6th as we kick off our pride month celebration with experience pride a two-day event featuring creators from the community as well as allies and friends 
And then stay tuned all month as we continue our celebration of pride. Only on the experience, comics, culture, and sales. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, we're in our final segment here on Rupp's World. Adam and I are reaching the very ends of the line, right? Oh, I'm <laughs> the the line. Finish line. Adam, and Adam finished a long time ago. I got so, orange slices and Gatorade over here. It's no, nice. Gee, you mean you got those like gummy orange slices? No. Oh, geez, I'm just what? imagining sports terms. Oh my god. You know, you had, you know, what I'm talking about those, those like, oh, the orange slices, yeah, are like sugar bombs. Yes, yeah, I wish I had those. So, to start out this final segment, not only do I have basically a what's in the box, a box we haven't touched in probably a year, um, because I had to dig deep into the bottom of our pile of boxes that we use, and we're going to go to that next. But in the meantime, I am going to give you guys a peek into not this latest. Um, what do we call this? Mystery mail call from Comic Tom 101. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up on camera my mystery mail call from March, I think. Is that when this was from, Adam? Uh, no, you're so far behind. So I can't. It says it was stamps.com on May 17th. So is this the most recent one? This is the most recent one we got in. Yeah, so this is the one that is not shipping right now with the something is killing children but the one that came out just a month before that. So here we go, just to give you guys a peek at it. That's what it looks like. Mr. Mail Call, Comic Tom. There we go. We're gonna slice this bad boy open. We are gonna see what we got out of this one because we literally have no idea what we're getting other than we're getting some really cool variants. That's the one thing we do know we're getting. Yeah, as long as you get at least one, it's really nice. One. But one of these times, we're gonna get that little slip of paper in there that says you get a CGC book. It's basically like your golden ticket from Willy Wonka. So it comes in this nice black bag. I still think he should print up his own bag that say, you know, mystery mail call on the bag. So we're gonna offer up this stuff even. So first up is the postcard. And that, who is this Adam on the cover? Is this Hellstrom, Hellstorm? I don't know. Uh, Red Drift Woman, blah, blah, blah. Exclusive art prints. It just kind of looks Mephisto-ish. It's Mephisto. Very good, Adam. <laughs> Newsletter print. Mephisto by Beckett Glandy. Uh, Instagram at Art Becco. And that. And that. But it's a really cool Mephisto. I don't know why I said Hellstorm. I mean, I, I even, I knew that. That was horrible. But it has been a long day. So. Now, on the back here, it shows you some of the potential exclusives you could be getting. Some you will automatically get, but whether you get the trade jest version or the non-trade or the virgin version, et cetera, is just one of those things that's just all random. They literally package these all up, like oh, you know, whatever, 2,000 of them, and then they package them all up so they have no clue what's in any of them. And then they, and that's when they start throwing labels on. So we are going to check this out. And right off the bat, we scored good. Let's see. I'm going to first show you the exclusives that we get. So we've got the Women of Marvel. What is this? Women of Marvel, number one, Comic Tom 101 exclusive variant. This is by Sabine Rich. And that it is, what's that? Pretty nice cover. Yeah. See, Adam? It's like, it is 20 bucks to the first person. I only have one of these tonight. And then we have the detect Batman the Detective number one. Do you know anything about this one, Adam? Uh, that is the Tom King Cooper that's working for DC. Okay. I don't know which one it is. This is the trade variant, limited to 2,800 copies, art by Raphael Grassetti, which is the, which video game artist? Oh, come on, it's one of the big- I don't think I've ever heard of that name. Rafael Grissetti, he's one of the big video game artists. Um, 
God, I'm blanking. I'm just totally blanking. But this is Batman Detective. There's only 2,800 copies. Comes with a COA on the back there. This is number 2,362 out of 2,800 copies. This one here is $15 tonight. Sorry. I'll get that box out of your way. Adam. Yeah, it's okay. And then we had four other really cool books in here. So you get six books in your package, or at least we got six books in our package. Not only did we get the two variants, but the one thing I did just realize is we got none of the prints. That's kind of weird. We always get a print. Because you're supposed to get, oh, Tom, Russ, we got zero prints in our package, except for this thing, the Mephisto postcard. Because there's, yeah, there's three other prints, uh, 1100, or 2100, 1600, and a 500 print. So let's see, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the one book at the bottom. So tonight we also got Warlord number 55. These are nice my lights too. Uh, Warlord number 55, Mike Grell. This one here is two dollars tonight. And then we have the New Invaders number one. <laughs> Scott Collins, what's that? <laughs> For two bucks, yeah, or the three dollar bucks, two or three dollars. I bought one of those. And that for two dollars tonight, it's Scott Collins, right? Yeah, it is. Hey, I'm good at that. Then we have a this is what I consider a good book, and that one that I will send to the basement if nobody buys it tonight. Midnight Suns Unlimited number one with a amazing, I believe this is Texiera, right? I think Mark Texiera cover. Featuring all new stories, Ghost Rider, John Blaze, Darkhold, Night Stalkers, Morbius. This one here is ten dollars. What was that, Adam? Alex Schoolmie says the detective was a Scorpion Comics variant, and then the print was not back from the printer in time. Tom explained that on his Instagram. Well, yeah, but I only remember. So I said I, I. That's all I was saying is I just don't remember. So and then we have Star Wars Doctor Afra number five, the Terry Dodson variant. And that this one here is fifteen dollars. So that is our mystery mail call. I see that we have sold what just what? the uh, uh, was that women of Marvel and that. So like these here will go into our stock because these are books that I will I will always take a Midnight Suns Unlimited. This is Doctor Afra variant. I will always take a Doctor Afra variant. Dr. Afra's gone. Never mind. You it's not taking dark What's that? You will not take it dark. Nope. So there we go. So now it's time, and I'm gonna steal Frank's line. What's in the box? Because I'm literally just going to start with the box and go. Has anybody seen Jen? What's that? I was making a really dark joke. Oh, something I don't get. What's in the box? I asked if anybody had seen Jen. I still have never seen that movie. You've never seen Seven? Oh my God. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, of course I've seen Seven. What was I think? I was thinking of Diablo. Oh yeah, I was thinking of like Jennifer's body or something. Uh, okay. That was what his wife's name was? No, I was, because okay, his mind. girlfriend's head is in the box. I know that. Yeah. Well, geez, you just ruined it for anybody who's never seen Seven. One of the greatest David Fincher movies ever made. If not. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'd have to oh, yeah, you're supposed to show the uh, Rups Spider Gwen slaps. Oh, shoot, I forgot about that. I was so, like, taking a nap on the last. So, uh, what's in the box gets momentarily paused as Chris grabs a couple slaps. Oh, my God. That's why we appreciate comments and reminders because we will you guys. forget. Luckily, I didn't have to get the ladder out to reach these. So, first up, we have a Rups Comics. I'll right, even take it out of the plastic sleeve. Beautiful, clean case. As you can see, the high reflection of everything else in the room. <laughs> so we've got, yeah, there we go. Spider Gwen number one, 9.8. J. Scott Campbell cover. He created just exclusively for Rupp's Comics back in 2015. Uh, this is basically what I used as my, hey, I'm having a daughter help me pay for everything. And that we have this great teal cover which is actually one of my daughter's favorite covers it's kind of weird or colors and it worked out really well. yeah and that but with that rups logo on the back there and then we have that 9.8 blue label variant right there for 150 dollars 
Now, let me get this back in the sleeve so we keep that plastic clear case pristine. Shut one right there. And then we have this CGC 98 yellow label. It looks foggy because it's in a mylar, which you'd think it'd look better, but it's catching up even more reflection than the other cases. But it's a CGC 9.8 signature series signed by the one and only J. Scott Campbell. Let's see if we can get it in there. Right there, we got that silver signature Campbell right there. Authenticated, signed by J. Scott Campbell on July 12th, 2015. And that's Spider Gwen number one. This is from our original round of signings. And that it is $225 for the CGC 9.8 of the color. These are the only two CGC copies I have. Uh, we had so many in the beginning, but over the years, we've just sold them all. Uh, I mean, it's kind of scary to think that's over six years ago, since my daughter is over six now, which, which is even scarier. It's scary that Frank's kid has graduated college, bought a house, has a career, when I still remember when he was like five years old standing over me. He so he could college over? He, yeah, he graduated college, has a job, bought a house just now. Jeez. Yeah. It, it's It's crazy. Uh, Motor City Comic Con. This is the program guide from 2010, featuring a Greg Horn exclusive cover there for five bucks. Uh, Ooh, that's a thinker. There's a lot of noise coming out of my mouth, wasn't there? There was a lot. I wonder how much the camera picked up. Yes, I will do it. All right. So then, I, like I said, these are, this is a book we haven't touched in, or a box we haven't touched in a while. So I'm just going with whatever it is. Star Wars Force Awakens, uh, number two, the one in 25 Sam Nee variant for $10. Uh, Star Wars Shattered Empire. I believe it's Shattered Empire, wasn't it? Isn't that what that first Mace yeah. was? Shattered Empire, one in 25 variant for issue number two by um, Anka, what's his first name? Uh, Chris. Chris Anka, for Chris six Chris. for six bucks. Oh my God, I, yeah, we haven't looked at these prices in a long time. Uh, Star Wars Darth Maul number one, I don't even know who did this cover, for 15 bucks. Uh, Star Wars C3PO, this, these also, these prices are valid only during the show tonight because this is a what's in the box. As I said, I'm stealing this from Frank. Star Wars C-3PO, the number one photo variant for five bucks. Um, I think this was the only available at a museum. Yep, uh, comic block. So we have Star Wars Vader Down, number one comic block variant for $10. Uh, this has no price on it, so I'm going to make it up. Star Wars Vader Down, number one. This is Darth Vader versus um, Jackson. Jackson, the giant green rabbit. Do you have the Darth Maul variant? No. Oh, well, let me let me do this one first. For ten dollars, I have no idea what the ratio on any of that was. I know. Uh, Star Wars Captain Phasma, number two. No idea who did this cover, but one in fifteen variant for ten bucks. Yeah. Make stuff useful. Dark Knight 3, The Master Race. This is the 1 in 100. Weren't the Jim Lee variants 1 in 100? I believe so. Yeah, 1 in 100 Jim Lee variant for 50 bucks. Oh, sure. Uh, this is not priced correctly. <laughs> Young Avengers. Um, oh, my God. Scott O'Malley. I was blanking on the Scott Pilgrim guy. Did right? Sean Brian Lee. Brian Lee O'Malley. I got that. Part. I got the O'Malley. Yeah, part. the O'Malley. I, got the, I should have just said O'Malley variant. Young Avengers number one. This is volume two, number one O'Malley variant for 15 bucks. Yeah, that's what it is. But that's what we get when we pull a box out from a year ago. Yep. It's gone. Oh, it's gone already? It's gone. <laughs> I'm just rolling with this. It's like, whatever. Okay, let's keep going. Right? Yep. Okay. I'm not running out of time, right? Oh, I don't know. Honestly, I probably should be looking. <laughs> You have 14 minutes left. All right. We got plenty of time to get through this. What's in the box? I'm totally stealing that from Frank. Yeah. <laughs> New Avengers 27. 
This is the first Ronin, first Hawkeye as Ronin. And that uh, number 27, $25. Hawkeye series airing later this year. Uh, Black Flag, number two. <laughs> I like that. I'm doing my best, Vanna White. Uh, Black Flag, number two variant for $7. It's yeah, Dan Fraga. Uh, stick with the black. Black Widow number three, J.G. Jones once again. He does not, not only does the covers, but the interiors. This is the fourth appearance of Yelena Belova for $20. Please do, Frank. What's this segment called? Uh, this is called It's Been a Long Day and We're Making It Through. Yes. It has been a very long day. <laughs> oh, they got the What's in the Box clip up. Love it. Yes! This is, yeah, this is a high quality production here. I love it. Frank says he's filing a copyright claim against you, though. Bring it on. Batman number four, one in 25, Mike Choi variant for 10. Wow, this is way too cheap. For $10. And then, this is kind of fun, though. What's in the box? I'm going to watch this. Who did again. this one? Is this Ivan Rice's yes, tiny little thing? Oh, my God. I could barely make that out. Batman number three, one in 25, Ivan Rice variant for $10. God, these are never going back up, I can tell you that much. Not at these prices. Uh, Batman number six, one in 25, first full appearance of the Court of Owls. This is the... Gary Frank. Really? Where's this? No signature. For $80. On that. So, uh, Court of Owls will be in the... the video game. They're in the... A uh, Matt Reeves' new Batman movie. Yeah, the Gotham Show. Oh, that's good. Has it been a confirmed? I think. Okay, maybe. Cool. That'd be awesome. Uh, oh, that'd be true. Yeah. I mean, we could see Talon. We could. They could do all that without Batman. Batman. This is. Um, what's that? Howard Chicken. That's how he signs his name now. Yeah. Okay. Batman number twenty-eight. Uh, this is the Howard Chicken one in twenty-five, I believe. It's also the first appearance of Bluebird for forty bucks. The steampunk variant to that. Oh, is it? Yep. The, the giant plane and the goggles and the gears didn't scream yeah. steampunk to you. So, Age of Ultron, book 10. This is the Mark Brooks variant. First Angela and the MCU for $20. Oh, this seems way too cheap for this. I love this cover, too. Yeah. This is this is one of my favorite Terry Dodson Marvel covers. Uh, X-Men, number one. Terry Dodson variant for... For if I'm gonna stand up here, I'm gonna have fun with it. Deal with Terry it. Terry Dotson variant for ten dollars. Put that one up. <laughs> Just keep going. Oh, yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, somehow or another, I'm gonna make it. Uh, yeah, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful cover. So if anybody gets like an amazing deal off this what's in the box thing, let me know. I just 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 rub it in, please. Avengers, or sorry, not Avengers, Avenging Spider-Man, number one, Joe Casada variant. This is a full wraparound variant. Um, was this polybagged? Where is it? Yeah, this is polybagged even for $10. Yeah, digital oh, code $10. inside. Yeah. Was okay. when we uh, looked it up back in the day. Yeah. Iron Invincible Iron Man, number 500. This is the Joe Casada wraparound variant for $40. Uh, I if I remember correctly, it was like a one in a hundred, one in fifty. It's a ridiculous one. I miss Matt Fraction's Iron Man. That's some good Iron Man. Um, no price on this one, so I'll make it up. Uh, Green Lantern. Is this Green Lantern Core or just Green? Green Lantern New Fifty Two. Okay, Green Lantern New Fifty Two issue number three, one in twenty five. Ethan Van Skyver variant for fifteen bucks. Fifteen dollars. Since uh, Sinestro is a key character in the Green Lantern Core HBO Max movie. Damn it. Seriously. God. Seriously, guys, let me know what it really what these things really go for. Uh this is new Suicide Squad, number 12. Like the Tiger King. I will never financially recover from this. <laughs> Green Lantern 75th anniversary variant for ten dollars. I have all my prices. I love how we just all the prices disappear on me. Um, Uncanny X-Men, number 20, the Cure for the Cancer variant by Craig Land, Craig Horn? LaRocca. LaRocca. I'll go with that lips. one. Okay, for five bucks. 
Then we have Uncanny X-Men 19 point now, which I never really understood. Sure. The, oh, the point now is the, the animal variant by Chemical. God, how many covers does he do? Uh, 19 point now Chemical animal X-Men variant for 10 bucks. We get our cat back on the show. And bunny. Which is number one, the CBLDF variant for from Scott Snyder, Jock. Scott Snyder and Jock. But this is a CBLDF uh, benefit book for which is number one for sprinting, blah, blah, blah. 20 bucks. You know what the cover is? For the cover? No. Cliff Chang. There we go. Cliff Chang. I don't even scumbag number one. One with the, the toy, that's the little toy variant. Diamond Retail Summit 2017. God, this is a serious mix. I love that cover. Yeah, that cover's awesome. Am I gonna regret this one? No, nah, okay. Uh, this is scumbag number one, right? Yep, scumbag number one, one in ten, the toy variant for 10 bucks. I don't know what you're going to regret anymore, but yeah. no regrets. No regrets. No, no excuses. Number one choice for a neck tattoo. <laughs> Are you serious? I you just, just make it. No. What's it from? Where the Millers has no I've regrets not seen spelled it yet. wrong. Oh, go watch Where the Millers if you haven't anybody. That movie is phenomenal. Okay, is this the live action? Yeah, it's the, uh, it's no, the, you're the guy from The Office. No, uh, no, it's um, Jason Sudeikis and Jennifer Aniston. You're thinking of Miller's versus Machines or whatever. The no, Miller's is. versus Machines. Yeah, the new animated one. Yes. Um, X Men Prime number one. Damn it! I knew I shouldn't put that one up. X Men Prime number one. Uh, Retailer Summit 2017. Variant covered by who? Adam? Any idea? I can't. Oh, it's that. In sight, that yeah, the guy who got did Andrada he get? Now? Yeah, he got kicked off a book because he wrote some stuff in some panels that he wasn't supposed to. Injure some stuff. Yeah. He did some stuff. Ten dollars. Controversial. Dang it. <laughs> Frank knows. Frank knows. What? Not even one letter. No, because the no regrets neck tattoo is spelled wrong. Oh. <laughs> not even one. Not, not one letter regret. I forgot who this was for. Was it Alex? <laughs> I have no yeah. idea. I don't even know what this book is. What is this? That's All Star Batman. No, but what? I mean, there's no barcode. Yeah, there no, we no. go. No regrets. <laughs> Who, who is our producer tonight? Because I was told Jerry was our producer. Did you know Jerry was back? I didn't, but if it's Jerry, Jerry's on top of things. Yes. It's like uh, All-Star Batman number seven. We're having actually a good time. We're having a good time tonight. <laughs> All-Star oh, Batman funny. number seven. Uh, I have no idea what variant this is. It's Frank, Ave Frank Avella's. Um, I, at least I know that comics much. Pro. Ten bucks. Oh, Adam's taking care of claims. I'll toss this up. Uh, then we have, what is this? Avengers Marvel Now? Yep. Uh, John Romita Jr., Avengers Marvel Now, issue number two variant for $10. Come back. Oh. Who did this cover? That is Eric Kente or something like that. Oh, Kiante? Uh, yeah. yeah, he used to do Verotic, a lot of stuff Verotic. Yeah. For Glenn Danzig's company. Uh, Ark Arkham Manor, number one. This was the variant cover, one in ten or one in twenty-five. Uh, I think a one in ten on that book. Okay, for ten bucks. Last name is spelled C A N E T E. Something like that. Here's one I'll probably regret selling too. This is the New York Comic Con exclusive Mass Effect Invasion number one cover for ten dollars. Mass Effect Master Collection just came back yep. out. All three games. And I heard it's one. getting great reviews. Well, even though it's, I'm, the first three games that I don't know. are arguably no, masterpieces. I, played it, so. I don't know nothing. I know more. We about, don't know nothing. I know about more about Portal than I know about that. That's weird. I well, it's only because I don't know. I read some stuff. Uh, Iron Man number twenty three point now. This is the Deadpool Infinity Gems Rings. Infinity there. Toe Ring variant. There you go. Oh my God, those are toes. Yep, they are toes. I just. Oh my God. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Ten dollars. This is actually a really hard to find That's variant. It's already gone. <laughs> invincible number 98. This is a really hard uh, invincible variant to find. Uh, Chris Casario, or how do you pronounce it? G G yeah. Garuso. Yeah, Garuso. We're going to go with that one. 25 bucks. 
And as we all know, season two and three are coming for Invincible. Uh, this is a, a cover. Ooh, um, will Chris put it up? Oh, I'll put it up. I don't care. Birds of Prey, number eight. I'm going to go with a VG copy for 40 bucks. What sort of little analogy can we come up with next that uh, Jerry will throw up as a... I don't know. So we also have some really cool, well, some really great Adam Hughes Wonder Woman covers. Uh, we have Wonder Woman number one. Seriously? Yeah. Dang it. Wonder Woman 140. Yeah, with the Batgirl movie coming up. Yeah. I, still, I love it that the Bad Boys for Life directors are doing it. Uh, Wonder Woman 140, Adam Hughes uh, cover featuring the Trinity for 15 bucks. Wonder Woman 146, uh, Adam Hughes sacrificing skull Wonder Woman for $15. Sacrificing skull Wonder Woman. Uh, Wonder Woman, one, where's the number? 151, uh, Adam Hughes variant, um, Wonder Woman. I don't want to say the words, but I, I'll be nice. Uh, do you know who the god is? I don't. Okay. The Greek god or whatever. Yeah. So, um, 25 bucks. God, I couldn't, I couldn't come up with I, I, I flaked. I failed. So, we have Detective Comics, number 854. J.H. Williams, Greg Rucka, and Batwoman along with backup feature featuring the question for eight bucks. How can you read that from, it's like, that just blows my mind. I can, yeah, wow, this is really too cheap. Uh, Deathstroke, the Terminator, number one from 1991 for $8. It might be the last book, I think we're at 9.59, yep. Oh, okay, I can stop now. The okay, box guys. is empty. The box is empty for the moment. Last thing. Check it out, guys. These are exclusives available on rupsworld.com. Uh, we have the limited 3000 Brian Rood, limited 1000 alternate virgin cover, both by Brian Rood, Star Wars artist, Lucasfilm. We are out of here. Ciao, guys. Huh? Bye. <laughs> June is Pride Month on The Experience, and we're celebrating our friends in the LGBTQ plus community. Join us June 5th and 6th as we kick off our Pride Month celebration with Experience Pride, a two-day event featuring creators from the community as well as allies and friends. And then stay tuned all month as we continue our celebration of Pride, only on The Experience, comics, culture, and sales.